Thanks for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgie Calvin-Smith. Tonight, Uganda may take thousands of Afghan refugees. Washington asked Kampala to consider temporarily hosting those looking for a safe place as the rush to flee the Taliban takeover continues. Also, 18 to 39-year-olds are now welcome to get their COVID vaccines in Tunisia. The drive kicks off with a huge campaign in which nearly 5% of the population is inoculated in just a day. And heavy rains bring a windfall of delicacies in Central African Republic. The season marks the time to harvest caterpillars, a delicacy in the region that's only on the menu for one month a year. But first, Uganda is considering a U.S. request to take in Afghan refugees. Tens of thousands of people are in a desperate race to flee the country after the takeover by the Taliban. Washington's reportedly asked Kampala to temporarily host about 2,000 Afghans. Michael Hagen joins us now with more. Michael, so what more can you tell us about the details of this, this deal? Well, details of this deal were leaked early uh, by a junior minister in the Ugandan government. Uh, and the, the Ugandan government have been trying to claw back some of the details throughout the day, saying that there's no final deal yet. But uh, from what has leaked, uh, as you say, 2,000 uh, Afghan refugees may come here for a period of three months, uh, arriving in batches of approximately 500 people at a time, uh, before being processed and, and perhaps moving on then to other countries, maybe even the U.S., Uganda is not the only country who's been approached for this deal. Kosovo and Albania have reportedly also been approached with this offer. Now, Uganda already has uh, one of the world's largest refugee populations, nearly 1.5 million. Does it have the resources to keep offering that kind of support to those that need it? Yes, Uganda hosts some of the poorest people in the world, refugees from the Democratic Republic of Congo and South Sudan. Uh, and the, the refugee response plan is desperately underfunded. Since 2019, uh, there, there's been a real falling off of international support, and the UN World Food Programme has cut refugee ra food rations by 30% in 2020 and by a further 10% in February of this year. So uh, it's, it's not well resourced. A key part of this deal, I think, will be how much the US is prepared to pay the Ugandan government to take uh, Afghan refugees and how much political uh, benefit the Ugandan president, Yair Museveni, can extract from this deal. Thanks very much, Michael O'Hagan, there for us in Uganda. Look now at some news in brief. At least 37 people, including 14 children, have been killed in an attack on a village in southwestern Niger. Armed men raided Bani Bangu near the Malian border on Monday. It's in a region where extremists have killed over 420 civilians this year alone and driven tens of thousands from their homes. South African soldiers will continue to patrol cities across the country until mid-September. About 25,000 troops were sent out in response to protests and looting that first broke out after ex-president Jacob Zuma began serving a 15-month jail sentence for contempt of court in July. At least 337 people were killed in some of the worst violence the country had seen in decades. The military deployment will now be scaled back to just 10,000 who will continue to work with police for the next month. And there was bated breath from football fans from across the continent as the official draw of the 2022 Africa Cup of Nations was held in Yaoundé on Tuesday night. In Group A, hosts Cameroon are alongside Ethiopia, Cape Verde and Burkina Faso. Record champions Egypt are in Group D with Sudan, Guinea-Bissau and Nigeria. Well, Morocco battled wildfires this week as blazes ravaged several parts of the Mediterranean. Climate scientists warn that the seasonal fires will become increasingly common because of man-made global warming. Over 90 people were killed in over 19 blazes in Algeria. Now, most of those are now under control, but many who fled the disasters are finding little left upon their return home. Wasim Corne with more. The flames are gone, leaving behind them acres upon acres of charred hills. One week since massive fires tore through large parts of northern Algeria, residents are starting to return to the villages and towns where they once lived. 
These two brothers and their families who all shared a house escaped the fire by the skin of their teeth. Four people died here in this small village in the northeast of the province of Bejaya. The handful of buildings here used to be surrounded by forests and fields as far as the eye could see. All of that is gone now. Just a few kilometers away, the fight against the fires is still not over. Although the largest blazes have been put out, firefighters are still on alert to prevent any new fires from starting. According to the latest official numbers, at least 90 people have been killed in these huge fires, one of the worst disasters in Algeria in recent years. Well, Tunisia ramped up its COVID-19 vaccination campaign as it races to get ahead of a devastating surge in infections. 18 to 39-year-olds are now eligible for jabs. That kicked off with a huge campaign where nearly 5% of the population was vaccinated in just one day. The hope is that half of the population will be vaccinated before the autumn. Our team reports. On a scorching hot Sunday, hundreds are being vaccinated in this Tunis high school. Most of these young people have been waiting for their first dose for months. Amin is 32 and has just received a Moderna shot. With the help of volunteers, teams are trying to vaccinate as many as possible. They're going at a rate of 500 an hour. The drive's also open to foreigners. Mohab's a student from Mauritania. Despite record numbers being vaccinated on this Sunday, 30% of young people registered and scheduled did not turn up. Siwar hopes more Tunisians will turn out. It's the second open day campaign on this scale. At the regional health department, an operations unit oversees logistics. La majorité sont des volontaires et chacun s'occupe d'une tâche bien précise. On cherche s'il y a des problèmes au niveau des centres, on collecte les informations et on doit réagir rapidement pour apporter les correctifs nécessaires. Pharmacies will also take part in the drive. They're offering vaccinations by appointment. C'est organisé pour que ça ne perturbe pas l'activité régulière de la pharmacie. Donc on a à peu près 10 vaccinations le matin, 10 vaccinations l'après-midi. Tunisia's most recent COVID spike was its worst so far. But with more places to get vaccinated and more vaccines, there's hope the worst is over. Now, it is the rainy season in Central African Republic, and with the torrential rains comes a nutritious windfall caterpillars. Harvest time is an important chance to stock up in a region where many suffer from food insecurity. Known as Makongo, the insects are a Central African delicacy that's on the menu for just one month a year. This report by Clément de Ruma. Sunrise in the mythical forest of the Lobai region in the south of the Central African Republic. It's time for Charles, a teacher, to go on a walk with a twist. He's going to hunt for caterpillars. Every day we leave very early in the morning. Just as he set out, Charles runs into these children from a nearby village. They have just found a place where there's an abundance of the insects. We'll leave with them, they'll show us the way. A little further on, the expedition stops to examine the surroundings of this tree. You search gently, and when you see them, you pick them up. But luck isn't on their side. Charles and the children will have to make do with slim pickings this time round. Every year in the Lobai forest, the caterpillar season is eagerly awaited. It can represent an important financial windfall. I have to go into the forest to find the caterpillars, sell them and earn money for my family. I'm 62 years old. I'm told that I don't get old because I walk miles and miles every day. 
After his long stroll, Charles walks on for a few more kilometers to the town of Bata, in the heart of the forest, home to the largest market in the region. Bengi merchants collect the caterpillars here and sell them in the market every day. Buyers from the capital purchase these insects by the thousands. Marie Aimée makes the trip every morning, even though it takes six hours on a motorbike. I buy the caterpillars for 10,000 and try to sell them for 12,000, so a profit of 2,000 francs. Sometimes I make money, sometimes I don't. Or a few euros, a surprising business that only lasts for a month, but which allows families to put some cash aside. These caterpillars enable people to pay for their children's education. If someone in the family gets ill, caterpillars help them pay their expenses. The long walks in the forest whet the appetite. Charles visit Priska, the most famous cook in his village. She adds some onions for seasoning and a bit of oil. The recipe is simple, but requires know-how. For a month, to meet a high demand, Priska cooks makongos several times a day. We don't stop eating caterpillars, because they're good for the family and full of vitamins. In just a few seconds, the first plate is polished off with gusto. See you next year to eat fresh caterpillars once again. Well, that's it for Iron Africa for now. Thanks for joining us. And do so again if you can. Take care.